Hi everyone, welcome back to Faith in Flower. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you and introduce myself. My name is Robin and here on YouTube, I do videos on homemaking, meant to encourage you no matter what homemaking looks like for you in your life. Our family lives in the Austin, Texas area, and currently we are in the middle of a move and a home remodel. So we have a lot going on. And in today's video, part of my video is in our current home where I have been cooking over the weekends and sort of preparing for the week ahead where we spend our time at our new home getting some remodeling done. So I have today's video starting off with a little bit of cooking and later in the video, I'm going to show you how I have organized our new bathroom. So if you enjoy videos like this, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope that you'll watch to the end and do that. If you find yourself needing a little bit of homemaking inspiration, some cleaning motivation, and some encouragement as a wife and mom, I'm hoping that you'll find it here. I love hearing from you down in the comments, so make sure to leave one below. Let me know where you are from. I read every single comment. I don't always get a chance to respond to each and every one of them, but be assured that I read them. I love seeing how you guys interact with each other as well. So make sure you check out the other comments. We have the absolute best group of subscribers here at Faith and Flower. It's a really special, encouraging community. I hope that you'll join in <laughs> and I just want to give you guys a big thank you. I have been on YouTube for four years now and it really wouldn't be possible without all of the support that I get from you guys. You have no idea how much your sweet comments mean to me. This week, as I was preparing some meals to take along to the new house for the week, I focused in on my sourdough starter, which I've been neglecting a little bit. It needed to be re-strengthened because I probably wasn't feeding it as often as I should have been, but I was able to perk it up really easily just by feeding it every six hours for a day or so. So if you have neglected your sourdough, you might wanna give that a try. After that, I was able to make this batch of sourdough English muffins. These are so good. I use Lisa's recipe from Farmhouse on Boone, so I'm going to link that down in the description box if you wanna check it out. We enjoy them for breakfast like this with just a little bit of butter and jam, or they are great for sandwiches. We especially love like egg sandwiches with a little bit of bacon and cheese or something like that. They really cannot be beat and they are just so good for you as well. If you have been with me for very long, you probably know that we mostly eat gluten-free because our son Peyton has celiac disease. But this is one exception because when it comes to bread products, it would be so expensive for the entire family to eat gluten-free. So I just make sure that I have a really good alternative for Peyton and we just keep those things separated. I know that it's possible to do gluten-free sourdough, and one day I will try to develop a starter for that, but um, that's gonna go on the back burner while we get a few other things accomplished, like our new home renovation. Also this week, I made homemade sauerkraut. It's so good for you. It's full of probiotics and our family loves sauerkraut. And while we were visiting friends in North Carolina, my friend Tatiana gave us some of her homemade sauerkraut, which was so good. So she told me how she made it. And I also used sort of a combination of the recipe from Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone and also Mary from Mary's Nest. So I'm going to list both of those videos below in case you're curious about how to make homemade sauerkraut. Both Lisa and Mary are amazing in their videos at describing all of the details to making sauerkraut and the benefits, so check out those videos. And I will just tell you that it is very simple. It's basically just cutting up a couple heads of cabbage, adding a couple tablespoons of salt, 
After that, you mix the salt into the cabbage, sort of massaging it or even pounding it as I'll show you. This is something that I learned from Mary at Mary's Nest. You just want the cabbage to sort of release some of its liquid and then you pack it really tightly into a mason jar and make sure that all the cabbage is kept below the liquid that's formed. Ensuring that the cabbage stays below that liquid is really important, so you save out a couple of cabbage leaves, maybe more than two if necessary, and then you will need something to weight those leaves down. So I bought these sauerkraut weights on Amazon. I will put them in my Amazon store and the link for that is down in the description box. But as you'll see on both Lisa and Mary's channel, they use different things to weight it down. You don't have to buy anything. You can use something you already have at home. Then you just set it aside in a cozy area of your kitchen to start fermenting, which takes at least a week. So I will let you know how ours turns out. Our new home is a little farther outside of Austin and our neighbors have sheep, which is so fun. <laughs> Austin loves observing the sheep. He doesn't bark at them, which is great. And they are just so cute. It's really fun to watch them. This week I wanted to figure out a few solutions to some problems we're having in our new bathroom. We don't have enough places to hang our towels or our washcloths, so I wanted to solve that issue. Also, you guys know I love to squeegee the shower every day to keep the glass nice and clean, and so I need a space for that as well and my razor. Plus, we have a lot of things out on the countertops, and that's because I haven't taken the time to clean out the drawers and the cabinets below. We have a window in our bathroom, which I love because it gives so much natural light, but it doesn't give us any privacy, so we need to get a window treatment here. And the medicine cabinet needs to be cleaned out as well because I can't wait to take advantage of this extra storage. This bathroom is significantly smaller than our current bathroom, but I feel like we have adequate storage here and I don't have everything from our current bathroom to move in just yet. In fact, I only have the bare necessities. I keep my makeup in my travel case and you can see some of the other things that I have out on the counter here. And it would just be nice to go ahead and find some homes for these things and start setting up some storage solutions. I use rubbing alcohol to prep some of the areas where I'm going to add some storage solutions in our shower. I plan to stick some things to the wall and so the alcohol will ensure that the surface is as clean as possible and so hopefully these things will have a better chance of sticking and staying in place. I bought a set of these adhesive hooks to add to the wall of our shower so that our washcloths and my razor will have a home. They came in a pack of four, so I'm using the fourth one on this side of the shower to give our squeegee and microfiber cloth a home. Next, 
Next, I need to address the issue of our towel storage. <laughs> right now we only have one hook for our towels and no towel bars. So I found a suction towel bar that I'll show you in a minute to put on the outside of the shower door. But first I'm going to clean it really well to make sure that I have the best possible surface for it to adhere to. This suction cup towel bar got great reviews on Amazon, so I'm hoping that it's gonna work well for us. I've been pretty amazed at just how strong these suction cups are. You actually tighten them by turning them to the right, and it seems to be adhering to our shower door wonderfully. So this has been a great solution for us, and now we have an extra space for hanging towels and letting them dry. I'm also adding a couple of command hooks to the doors, so that gives us extra towel storage or a place to hang a robe or anything else that we might need here in the bathroom. For the vanity area, I just wanted to remove all of the shelf paper from the previous owners and give them a good cleaning. Because we're living between the two houses, I'm not ready to move everything in here yet, but I wanna get the spaces ready for when we do. And when we are staying here, we can keep our things in the drawers and cabinets instead of cluttering up the top of the counter. This medicine cabinet is going to give us a lot of extra storage, which I am planning to take full advantage of. But first, of course, I need to give it a good cleaning.
Now that everything's clean, I can start doing a little bit of organizing and planning for how we are going to put all of our things in here when we move in. For now, Patrick's items are easy. <laughs> he wants to keep everything in his travel bag so he can grab it and go as we move from house to house. But I really like to have all of my makeup in the drawer. I just find it so much easier to find what I need instead of always living out of my, you know, sort of travel case. But I did realize pretty quickly that just putting them in the drawer without a drawer liner or any bins just made for a jumbled mess. <laughs> so when I was at Walmart, I saw one of these home edit kits that they have just come out with. I love the show Home Edit and these acrylic bins are really nice. I also felt that they were a pretty good price. This is the bathroom set and it came with all of these pieces. So I played around with them to try to figure out the best configuration to store our things. The drawers in this home are smaller than the ones in our current bathroom, so I knew the storage solutions I had there weren't gonna work here, but I love these modular pieces because I can reconfigure them however works best for me and also for the size of the drawer. I think I will probably add a drawer liner just to keep them from slipping around, but I'm really happy with this solution. The last thing I wanted to address was this window. We really need some sort of window covering to give us some privacy. It just faces our backyard, so it hasn't really been an issue, but it's something that I wanted to take care of. I found a company on Amazon that makes really beautiful Roman shades. We have a lot of Roman shades in our current home, and so I knew that I liked those. I picked a nice neutral color. This is an off-white, so no matter what we decide to do, if I decide to paint the walls a different color, this is going to work. And it is really beautiful and really high quality. And if you guys are in the market for one, I will link it in my Amazon store, along with all of the other things that I used in the bathroom today. Since I did this, we've had several days to use the bathroom and it has made a lot of difference just with these small things added. Full disclosure, the soap dish that I put up is not a great solution. I've actually had it for several years. We use it in our current bathroom for the tub we have there, and I think the suction cup is just worn out. So it keeps falling off the wall, and I'll have to find something else for the soap. So I just wanted to let you know about that, but everything else is working great, and I'm really happy with the results. Thank you so much for spending your time with me here today. I really appreciate it. If you liked today's video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and don't leave without subscribing if you haven't already done so. You know I love to hear from you, so leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video on Sunday. Until then, have a wonderful week.